Listen up, you beautiful, beautiful people. From the shadow of Graceland, it's the 901 Soccer Podcast. I'm Scotty Smith, and I'll be your host. It has happened. For the first time in the history of Memphis 901 FC, a win has appeared in the win column. Three points have been secured. On a field in Chester, Pennsylvania, of all places, right outside Philadelphia, Memphis 901 FC won, Bethlehem still kneel. It's a big-time deal for the fans, for the players, for the owners, for everybody associated with this club. And we thought, let's bring in a special guest analyst to break down this match. Someone who was really, really in tune with the game from start to finish. Somebody who was right there watching this action. And we thought, who better than Memphis 901 FC head coach Tim Mulqueen? He was kind enough to join us. He's going to put on his analyst hat, and he's going to break down this match for us and tell us exactly what he saw from our players. So we'll get to that. We're going to... uh, Take a quick jump to our sponsor right fast, and then we'll get right into our interview with head coach Tim McQueen. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the 901 Soccer Podcast. We want to welcome in our special guest analyst today. He is none other than head coach Tim McQueen. Coach Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. It, uh, it was a great effort by the boys and, uh, and by everybody involved with the club, you know, building into this, this season and, you know, through the first three games. Um, so we were delighted that it, it finally came out in, uh, in Philadelphia. We wish it was at home, but, you know, look, we'll take three points anywhere we can. But it was, uh, it was a great feeling for, for the entire club. So what we're going to do here, uh, we always have a, a breakdown of the match after every match, and we have invited you to be our special guest analyst today. So what we're going to ask you to do is to take your coaching hat off for just a moment and put your analyst hat on. You're going to be like Tim Howard on the Bleacher Report set. Yeah. Okay. And you are going to be the analyst. We're going to break this down position by position, not 11 positions. We'll go with four. And we're going to ask you to analyze, first of all, the play of your keeper, Jeff Caldwell. What did you see from Jeff Caldwell Sunday night in rural Philadelphia? You know, I I think it was just what we've seen from Jeff since he's gotten here. He's, you know, extremely um, clean and technical. Uh, He makes good decisions. He's a great reader of the game. Um, Ben, our assistant coach, uh, brought up a great point to me, and I agree a thousand percent. He's incredibly brave and courageous uh, coming off his line. He's proven that the last several games, um, and he's just he's a re- he's a presence back there that gives all of us confidence. Um, so I thought he was top class again, and you know he's he has the the uh, the future to be to be a long time pro. You know, he's he's quickly becoming a fan favorite, and uh, part of that is he's really good on Twitter. Ah, I did not know that because I'm not on Twitter. I may have to have a word with Jeff. <laughs> no, he's excellent. He's excellent. Okay, he, just needs to ma- he needs to maintain – he needs to do exactly what he's doing. He's good. All right, good. So, we'll let him do that then. Listen, I'm telling you, the fans, when you, when you talk about the team with the fans, Jeff Caldwell's name keeps coming up. Everybody – really likes this guy and it's, i think that bravery is a lot of it a lot a lot of what you mentioned so um and, and i would add too you know he's extremely hard working in training um he wants to get better i think that comes through in his play as well um and look i mean you can't deny the fact the kid's super talented um yeah. and you know i i respect him i mean look goalkeeping is my passion um, right and i i respect his technical ability, but I really respect his wanting to learn the game um, and take his his play to the next level. So he's a great one for the fans to get behind, and I'm delighted they attached themselves to the goalkeeper, which is great, and because uh, we don't get enough love, so we need it. <laughs> That's right. All right, you're looking at a back line here that has only really given up 
a penalty, not by, you know, the foul was not on the guy in the back line. And then a kind of a fluke goal that, you know, maybe careened off somebody's shin. You're talking about a back line here who you can make the argument for hasn't actually given up a goal through three matches. Talk a little bit about your back line. They, they've been phenomenal. And, I, and you're exactly right. A penalty kick, um, you know, three minutes into a match. And I've seen it called. I've seen it not called. You know, then we get unlucky with a, a deflection, doing the right thing, blocking a shot from a distance, and we just get unlucky with how it how it deflects. And then they come back in, in a difficult environment against you know the the Bethlehem Steel that dropped five players down from their first team. Two actually played in the MLS game the night before, um, right? And and didn't allow anything but two shots from a distance. Um, so I, I was delighted. Again, in their performance, Mark Birch does a fantastic job of organizing that group. Uh, Todd Pratzner knows his role, uh, you know, being the, the, the ball winner in there and, and competing everything for everything. Wes Sharpie arguably could be considered our most consistent player since the day we started camp. Um, he's been fabulous. He's a veteran. Uh, he understands how to play right back, and he helps the guys in front of him. And then Tristan Hodge. You know, for a young uh, Trinidadian and an international, he's come in and really solidified us at right back. But then if you look at the Philly game, you know, Abdi Muhammad goes in for Tristan, you know, because Tristan's coming back from international duty and does a fantastic job uh, in that position. So, you know, we feel really good with the defenders we have. We love the way they play together. Um, and it gives us the ability now to, to possess the ball and get forward because we know we have such good defenders. So it was just announced that uh, earlier today that Wes Sharpie was actually named to the USL team of the week, something that you could argue, you know, maybe should have been before now, but Hey, we'll, we'll take that. That's a good award uh, for a recognition for a job well done. Yeah. I, I'm delighted. You know, Elliot was on the team of the week, the week before for his uh, contribution, our, our Loudon game. And then for, for Wes to get on uh, this week, I think, you know, look, you could have put a number, of, for me, a number of our players on, you know, from Jeff to Birch to uh, Wesley, all the way up. Rashan scores the first goal, uh, his first pro goal. It's a winner. Um, so, but, you know, we're delighted for Wes. Uh, he puts it in every day. Uh, he works hard. He's a great representative of the club off the field as well. So I, I'm very happy for Wes and, and delighted that his play at right back was recognized because he has, he has been fantastic in all three matches. Uh, looked like Tristan Hodge picked up a bit of a knock in the Wales game midweek, uh, but he is is he's one hundred percent healthy right now, right? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. He was able, you know, he he was fine uh, when he got back from Wales. But you know, we have a long season, and we were not going to press him in the service uh, for lo a long stretch of that game because you know that's a long trip and it's a tough game. He went ninety plus minutes in that game. Uh, it's an inter international, so the level's quite high, obviously, and the pace and the, the, the violence of the game is, is more. So uh, we tried to be smart with him, and we knew less than would have to come off. So that was a predetermined uh, move on our part as a coaching staff. So you've added a lot of depth. Some of it is in the back line, and it looks like that that is a, a position that has really become a strength of this team. Let's talk about midfield for just a minute. We've got uh, several uh, different guys who are, are uh, playing in the midfield, training in the midfield, but you've had some consistency in there uh, in the defensive part of the midfield with uh, Ewan Grandison and also uh, Dan Metzger. Let's talk about those guys for just a second. Well, I think Dan Metzger, you know, has had three incredible matches for us. Um, you know, he was a guy that when I first got the job, I targeted right away because I've known him for a long time as a player. And he's come in and, and he's been, you know, he's been our guy that links the backs to the, to the forwards. He's our, our link midfielder and he's been phenomenal at it. And then he does a really honest job defensively, especially against Bethlehem, uh, you know, protecting Ewan when Ewan had to step out and defend and he would cover then in behind Ewan. So, um, so he's been great. And then Ewan, you know, when we, we scouted him, we knew he was a very physical, aggressive, quick ball winner. And on our pitch, you need that. And I think any team that looks to be successful, you need to have that player in midfield who wins the ball, who gets the ball for your team and then can distribute it. And Ewan's been top class with that. So, um, you know, we tease him that, you know, he went in for a tackle with a guy from Philadelphia and the Philadelphia player jumped out of the way. He wanted no part of it, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, 
you know, he's been, he's a, he's a humble player, you know, humble person, a great player. So those two guys have really been the anchor uh, and that allowed our attacking group to even get higher up the field. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So let's talk about the attacking group for a little bit. We've got uh, Dwayne Muckett has been playing there consistently. Uh, you had uh, Adam Najum there the first couple of matches, but he was called away on an international duty. Uh, so uh, Morgan Hackworth making his first start. And uh, then you also have um, uh, some other guys who, you know, are, are now kind of in the mix at this. Let's talk about kind of that attacking midfield position. What are you seeing out of that group? Well, I, I think we have so many options, which is, which is great. So, you know, Adam is obviously a very important player for us. His quality is undeniable. His passing is fantastic. So, um, so obviously he's a player that we, we rely on. Uh, we know he's going to be knew we, he would be called away for international duty. That's why we have less than Paul, who's a Trinidadian international as well. Uh, less than I thought was a very game player for us on, on Sunday. He had played at midweek 81 minutes and gave us 55 hard, hard minutes for us. Um, and we are very grateful for his contribution. Then Morgan, you know, he's a player that we loved coming out of college. I have a good relationship with his dad, his dad, you know, felt that Memphis would be a good place for him. We agreed. Uh, and he came in and, you know, Morton's, uh, Morgan's soccer IQ is off the charts. I mean, he gets it. When we give him an assignment, he understands it first time. You don't have to explain it again, and he gets it done. Uh, Dwayne uh, has been, uh, ever since the St. Louis game, he's been on the uptick. Uh, he's really provided us with great width and the ability to run out of defense. Um, so we, we've been really blessed with the attacking group that we have with those four players, you know, junior coming in gives us a different dimension as far as his ability to connect passes and hold the ball up. Uh, you know, obviously if now we, if we were to transition into our forwards with Rashawn, uh, and Elliot, you know, we really have some dynamic big bodies up there who are, have good feet, soft feet. So we can play it into them. The ball will stick and allow us to get forward. But if they turn and face you, then the defenders are in big trouble because uh, they can run by you. They can com- they combine with other players to get in behind uh, and they take their chance as well. So for me, um, the last two games getting goals from our strikers uh, is very important. So uh, Roshan Dali, uh, as I, I mentioned this uh, on the uh, USL quick strike, it, a striker has to make the most of his opportunities. And you never know when those opportunities are going to come. Sometimes they only come one or two a game. Obviously, there was a, uh, you know, uh, from from Bethlehem's standpoint, from their point of view, uh, a very unfortunate back pass. But there was still quite a bit of work to do from Rashawn's point of view. Take us through the goal itself. Yeah, so we, in our scouting of them, uh, we know they play a high line. And we knew they would want to be in our end for, for large stretches. The field is it was really difficult to play on. Um, You know, they had played the night before, uh, wasn't in good shape for that game. And and by the time our game kicked off, it it was very difficult to play. So we we wanted to be conservative out of the back. And if we felt that there was any kind of trouble that we need to play balls forward into their end, uh, because we felt that if the more we put their uh, center backs on the pressure, that we would be able to nick a ball and get a chance out of that. Um, so we, we had that in mind, and we told Rashawn just to, to run things down, uh, and eventually something good would happen. Uh, and to the, to the young man's credit, he worked all game and tried to run things down. And, you know, Wes is, is very uh, smart in playing the ball in behind them. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, the defender makes a mistake on the, on the header. But, you know, the goalkeeper's coming out. The field is poor. You have a bouncing ball, and you have a tight angle. Those are four very difficult – he, situ, you know, uh, obstacles to overcome to score your first goal. And he took it first time over the goalkeeper's shoulder like he had been a pro for, you know, 20 years. So, uh, I, you know, for me, that's a great sign. It shows me that he has the composure in a difficult moment to gather himself and pick his, pick a spot and finish. Um, so it, it was just a, a, a great finish from him, especially combining all those elements. Absolutely. There are a lot of a lot of world class strikers who might have put that over the bar or in the side netting. And yeah. uh, man, it was just smooth. It just looked smooth, it, especially from the reverse angle when they showed the angle from behind the goal or from the behind the the, uh, the touchline. It's like, wow, that's man. He really struck that well. It was 
really, really nice goal. All right, Coach, we're going to give you the opportunity here to take your coaching uh, or to take your analyst hat off. We appreciate the analysis, but let's talk about a couple of coaching things. You can put your coaching hat back on. We've seen you out in the community a lot, going to schools, uh, going to hospitals, being involved in the Memphis community. Nothing endears you to a to the Memphis community like being involved in the Memphis community. What are you seeing and enjoying in your time so far? Yeah, I, I love it here. I mean, uh, I'll be honest. I, I, every day is a good day. And, um, you know, to get out in the community, the support's unbelievable. My, my thanks to the, the, not only the soccer community in Memphis, but the people of Memphis for all that they do in supporting our team. Um, you know, I got back into the locker room after the fantastic results Sunday night, and there was, you know, 20 text messages from people, not only that from friends and family, but from people that I just met here in Memphis. I mean, it was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, everywhere we go, win, lose or draw, we've had all three. You know, everybody's been very supportive and just I love the community. I want to be out there. I want to be a part of it. I think it's important that um, you know, when you're in a city, you adopt that city and you become a member, an active participant. And, you know, I do it and the club does it and we'll continue to do that. It's it's who we are. Absolutely. Coach, we appreciate that. And we appreciate you being on with us today. I got one more uh, question here because they would not let me, let me off the hook if I didn't ask. This. OK, what do you think about Bluff City Mafia so far? Ah, uh, I love those guys. The, the Bluff City Mafia, the, the men and women and boys and girls that have been in there have been fantastic. It, it was funny there. The Bethlehem coach said in his pregame talk how he was cons- wondering how we would react to not playing in front of <laughs> such an energetic crowd because they had about 50 people at their game and six and 50 of them were rooting for us. Um so, I mean, it, it, the Bluff City Mafia has created an atmosphere that uh, inspires our players, motivates us every day, um, makes us feel accountable. Uh, we wanted to win that game so much for the supporters who have been out there the first two weeks uh, to give them something to hold on to till we get back home. Um, it, so they, they've been great, and, you know, we need them. It's the best environment in the league. Uh, players are calling our players saying, geez, I'd love to go there and play. Look at that crowd. So, uh, you know, we thank, we thank uh, them for all their efforts. They were marching through the streets after we won. I mean, I love those guys. And, uh, you know, we hope to, to interact with them as much as possible. Fantastic. Coach, listen, thank you for taking time out of your day. And uh, we figured nobody was qualified to break down and analyze this game quite like the man himself who uh, you are now officially – officially in the win column uh, at the the USL level as a head coach. And we congratulate you, sir. And uh, we just uh, thank you for everything you're doing to to help this club be uh, everything that we've always dreamed of, which was just, you know, simply having a professional club to call our own. And we we commend you not only on the field, but also off the field for everything that you're doing and being a a true part of this Memphis community. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we'll keep getting out there and we uh, we can't wait to play back home soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week. It's a short week for the lads. I got to tell you, they played on Sunday. They're now going to play on Friday night. This one will be somewhere outside of New York City. The Red Bull Reserves will be the host. Um, They just came off of a 1-1 draw with Nashville SC. Pretty good team. It'll be great to see what our guys can do. That is Friday night. It'll be on CW30 and ESPN+. Plus. So definitely, definitely tune in for that. Uh, the next home match is April the 10th. So get your tickets today for that one. We want to see everybody there. It's a game that is on national television, on ESPN News. And so we want everybody to uh, to come on out and support the team that night and really show off what Memphis can do. That's going to be it for us. I'm Scotty Smith saying thank you for listening to the 901 Soccer Podcast. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. 
Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.